Who am I talking with? Matt Spiegel. <laughs> and, and, and Matt, we go a ways, ways back. I've, I've known you from a uh, previous company that you founded, but now you've founded another company. What is it? And yeah, so I founded Lawmatics. That's the current venture. Um, okay. Lawmatics is uh, is a CRM, but it's a lot more than a CRM. Uh, it's a CRM and an intake and marketing automation platform. I think that's the real key. Um, CRMs are everywhere. Uh, CRMs are pretty basic. What it, it, for people that don't even know what a CRM is, yeah. what does CRM stand for? Yeah, CRM is a customer relationship manager. Uh, so it's a tool to that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. Right. Uh, it can mean something very simple as like keeping a list of your co- of your contacts and your your customers and, and people you need to maintain relationships with. For to some, it means complicated products where you you know where you do marketing, you do automation, you do email campaigns. Uh, that's the way we define a right. CRM, and that's what Lawmatics. Are you are you dedicated to the to the legal industry? We are. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you had another company, um, sold it. You were weren't you a practicing lawyer at one time, weren't was, you? Yeah. And then it started another company offshoot from that. How long from the time you sold that company to when you started this company? Like, and I mean, like, okay, now I'm going to work on this company. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, it's come up a lot in the last couple of weeks, actually. Um, so I left my case. I, oh, I sold my case. My case was acquired in October of 2012. Right. And I stayed on until March of 2015. That's right. Yeah. Uh, I left and went and did very much non-legal related things for a little over two years, two and a half years. And then I came back into legal. And what, what made you come back? What did you see? So that's another great question. What, I mean, what's um, the problem that you saw? Or the opportunity? So, much, so actually it, it was... That came after I decided to come back, to be honest with you. Um, I spent some a whole bunch of time in consumer electronics, and something I realized when I was there was a consumer app, like home security-based software. Uh, and I was running a company that was prim- primarily based in Sydney, Australia, which is a challenge in and of itself. But I realized very quickly that, like, man, this is hard, and I don't know anything about this industry. <laughs> and not only did I not know anything about the industry, but I wasn't very passionate about that industry. What I quickly found, or maybe not so quickly, was that if you're not super passionate about it, it's hard to be the leader. It's very hard. I mean, because people will say, like for us, let's go into another vertical. And I said, I don't know anything about that other vertical. Exactly. I'm out in the land in the desert talking to people that I don't recognize. And passion, you know, I, I, I probably wouldn't be as passionate about it, but I definitely would feel lost. I yeah. wouldn't know the conversation and the, the talk about it. That's you're interesting to bring right. that up. So, so that's why... I initially was like, wow, I know I can't do this anymore. What should I go do? And and when I started thinking about that, I actually realized I kind of missed the legal industry. Man, I know that industry really well. I've done it before. I know that some things are going to be easier having done it before. So maybe I go back in. And then I started thinking about the opportunities that I had identified over the, my several, you know, my yep. years in the industry and noticed that a lot of them were still opportunities. And it was a no-brainer to start on that. And the CRM was one of the ones you thought yeah, about. Yeah, the marketing automation, the, the, the intake management, that, that lead management, the, the acquiring of clients. That was still such a big problem. Okay, so you started... I mean, you're not a technologist, are you? Or um, I know enough to be dangerous. Yeah, so you can get in there and <laughs> fool around. I do, yeah. Basically, <laughs> if you find a bug in Lawmatics, <laughs> that's, you. That, that's me. <laughs> do you, so when you when you decided to start coding this thing and pulling it together and seeing how it could work, did you have a you know a, a partner, employee, whoever that, that helped you get this thing up? And yeah. So how'd you how'd you pull it all together? I guess. Yeah. What I'm fortunate asking enough you. to have uh, a well of people that yeah. I could go to from the different companies I've been involved with. Right. And I could kind of pick some people who I think would be good. Um, I grabbed a CTO, someone who could be a co-founding CTO with me, right. uh, who's just one of the best engineers I've ever been around. Uh, and he can do things quicker and faster than people I've seen. So I brought him on. I was able to take two other people with me, and one one other engineer and uh, a creative, someone to be the designer, right. which is such a critical piece. In my opinion, uh, my case was, was such one of the reasons why it was such a big success was because of its usability. It's such an important part of what, of what software is these days. So having someone on board in that role, to me, was really important in the beginning. So we brought someone like that on board right away. No, the usability is huge. I mean, people think of it as, as graphics or design. It's something it's totally than different than that. I mean, when you when you look at Clio, and I don't know if it's Eric or Ernie that came over um, to run you know, the design of the user interface, that design is sitting right next to the tech and dev and they're working together they work together like 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 this so it becomes intuitive so you got that team together now you're going to build a thing 
how, how long did it take from, okay, well, the whiteboard is how it's going to work, yeah. to when, okay, we got a prototype that could be actually used? So it was surprisingly fast. <laughs> we we um, have a track record of building software really fast, and I don't know exactly why we're able to do that, but it's always worked. So we actually had, um, we had a feature set, kind of a list out of MVP that we wanted to get to, which matched some other software that we were interested in in the market. And we were able to get to that point in about four months. Which is um, really fast. Yeah, which is really fast. And then to actually get a full fu- a full vision of what we were looking for, uh, we got there in about nine to 10 months. And we were able to go into beta at that point. When you went into beta, how'd you get that, you know, where you're, who's using it? Who'd you present it to? How'd you get, you know, potential customers yeah, and real so customers? I, I, I pinged the network. I went to people I knew. I went right. to law firms that had been friendly right. when I started my case and other, you know, being a lawyer obviously right. helps with that. Going to friends, going to you know people in the in, in locally that I know that are law, that are lawyers who would be interested in the software, and then you know fortunate enough to know a lot of people in the industry such as yourself that I can go to and ask for their thoughts and take a look at it. Uh, guys like Guy Sakalakis who right. was really involved very early on and looking at things. Chelsea Lambert really involved. People like that that. Fortunately, I can go to, and they're willing to help and take a look at things. And you know, and that, there's things. a lot of truth to that. I mean, I I heard about this. I don't know at what conference, but you were sitting there plugging away on it and say, "Hey, can I show you this?" Yeah. And, you know, I'm back in the industry. I'll, I'm going to be doing this. I think you told me once. Since the next time I saw you, you actually had it up. Uh-huh. Um, but getting that, and it's just really just for me. It's just rough feedback I'm giving you. I can't give you how I would use it because I'm not yeah. a practicing lawyer anymore. But that's so valuable, <laughs> you know. It's just so valuable. So it's not just the lawyers, right? It's the people who who are immersed in the space, who have different viewpoints maybe than sometimes in your actual user. Doesn't mean that it's any less valuable. It's, no, it's and you valuable. can you can also find out. You know, do they know people that are that are that are dabbling in that area too, yeah, or whatever, and all that type of stuff that's coming up that can blindside you along the way. Um, of course. Do you, do you guys all all uh, self funded, or do you go out and get funding? To we do did this go out funding? and we had to go out and raise money. Uh, that's one of the things that's a little bit easier the second time around, yeah. as I'm sure. You they're know, investing in the team. Yeah. They're investing in the team. Um, people, you know, when, when I tried to raise money for my case, it was really hard, and it was also a different climate. Right. Uh, it'd probably be easier to raise it now. The climate's different, but, right. but back then in 2009, 2010, very hard. Right. Um, but but immediately, you know, starting to look to raise money for Lawmatics, a lot of the people who passed on my case are now willing to, to throw money in because they saw what happened with that. So so it's, it's easier the second time around. It doesn't mean that it's going to be any, any more successful. Right. It's just easier to, to raise money. How long did it take you to raise the money? Uh, a few days. Yeah. that's you know It, it depends on I mean, who you know and what yeah. those relationships are it with does. people. You're giving, at that point, based on what you did, you're giving somebody an opportunity to back a horse that has had some success and a team that knows how to be that jockey on that yeah. horse um, at that point in time. Right. My case took months. Months. <laughs> so you're pulling your hair out and saying, will this ever happen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it only happened because a very good friend gave me a very small amount of money, and then we were fortunate enough to not need any more. You, you've done two companies, and there's a whole gamut between people here. You know, there's people that stayed in a particular firm for a period of time so that they had money, didn't raise money, and there's other people that realized we're going to have to raise some capital to yeah. do this thing. What do you advise people thinking about that? Do they have to raise capital? Do they not need to raise capital? Because so, you must have been asked that question by yeah, people out there. Yeah, and I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a big believer in not raising capital. And if you do have to raise capital, only raising as much as you really, really, really need. It, the, I think that people have a tendency oftentimes to take a lot more money than they need because it's on the table. Right. And they're like, well, let's get it. Maybe it'll be a rainy day one day, right? And I think that the problem is, is you end up making bad decisions. Right? You make a lot different decisions when you're scrappier and when you don't have a lot of money. And when you know that you might run out of money in two months, that decision that you make on what you're going to do that day is a whole lot different than if you knew you had an eight-month run. Yeah, I mean, I think Seth Godin had a post not that long ago that talked about, you know, who would you want to be buying from? The the founder that's living in the, the big house with a big family out, out in the Hamptons? Yeah. Or, or the person that is eating cereal and sleeping on their couch? And they go, actually, you want to be <laughs> doing the cereal. <laughs> One the cereal entrepreneur because yeah. the one is hungrier and, yeah. they, and they do what you have, what yeah. you did. You're saying they got to get it good by this period of time. They right. don't have the other thing. And the other thing that can happen too is, is it isn't about raising the capital. That's the story. I mean, because you see a lot now in you know in various legal publications and legal tech publications, so and so raised X dollars, yes. and then that becomes the news story. And some all of a sudden they're good for whatever reason. It doesn't mean anything. 
or they raise too little money to accomplish anything so that they raise money for the nothing or they raise like you said too much money and they've got people that maybe don't understand you don't understand the industry they're going to fill you full of ideas that you've got to chase down now so it's, it's not as easy as it's people as think easy. it is there's there's another really big really big issue that i look at um and that is flexibility so the more money you take on the less flexible you are way more so way less, right? you know my case was a success in my opinion when we sold it it was the right time to sell it if we had if we had somebody who was more leveraged in my case we probably would not have been able to sell it when we sold it for what we sold it for but because we had we had raised so little we had much more flexibility and not just in in who had control but of the outcome right you know just just using some some hypothetical numbers if you own 75% of a company, selling it for 10 million is a pretty good deal. Big deal. If you own 20% of the company, you need to sell it for a lot more than 10 million to get the same kind of return, right? So it gives you it gives you a lot more options when when you have more ownership and when and the way to keep more ownership is to raise less money. And so that's why like I um, you know, Law Maddox is a bit different. The business model is such that it requires a bit more capital and we need to step on the gas pedal a little bit differently than we would, you know, out of my case or something right. else. Um, but but I'm very consciously aware, you know, very conscious of that fact of like, I want to maintain for me and, and my founders, not just me, but everybody, as much control of the company as possible so that we kind of control our own destiny. And, and if, depending on what happens when it happens, we can make a decision based on whether it's the right decision and not just based on financial gain or loss. The, uh, you know, there's something there right now, I'm even drawing a blank on the, 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 the question, but... But I know what it is. The getting customers, because people will develop things and they're not sure how people find them. Yeah. How do you? How are you bringing Lomatix to market? And getting people to discover you, <sighs> to buy, all those type of things. And it's a challenge for every company. It is a you know, challenge. It's like you beat yourself up and go, we should be doing better. We should be doing like somebody else, whoever that somebody else yeah. is. So we've, you know, we have some good, uh, good experience in this. In my right. case, we've done a pretty good job and... Uh, the numbers that we were bringing in as far as leads for my case at its peak are pretty staggering when you look at percentage of the market. Right. Um, we have not done any active real mar- any active marketing at Lawmatics yet. Yep. But we yeah. Will. Um, I think you know what we're doing now is that we've actually leveraged partnerships quite heavily. So uh, building on the Clio platform, building an integration with Practice Panther, building an integration with other practice management systems. Right. Um, which is a valuable method of distribution. Um, I definitely have tried to play my, if I have a reputation, I've definitely tried to play that in the space, um, use it as much as I can to, to gain visibility. Um, and that's worked for you know, you're, to this point. You're, you're, you guys are relatively new, so everything must feel relatively positive. Or are there those days where you're thinking, is this going to work for sure? It's not. It's not days. It's hour. It's hour. <laughs> it depends on which hour of the day. Yeah, it's like that 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 manic curve of entrepreneurs. You're like this, and then you're like that, and you're like this. It Does is. that go by days or hours? I mean, it goes by hours. <laughs> right now, it goes by hours. Well, depending on 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 the week, it'll go by days or hours. Right. This this week is probably a days. Last week was an hours. And you can ask my wife. She'll be the she'd be the best arbiter of right. of whether I'm going on an hour by hour basis or a day by day basis. What do you worry about? I mean, like what? the stuff that, you, that brings you to the lowest where you causes you to pause probably everything but development yeah. probably right now yeah. um, we'll never as a, as a non-technical founder never development is never moving as fast as you want it to right um, it's, you're always going to want it to move faster you're always going to want more features now um, or, less, and, or less features and let's get it out the or door less features <laughs> and, and, yeah, or just get the features working really well so there's not bugs you know what I mean um, to they, me, there are a few things they, that are business killers, and those are the things I worry about. Yeah, the uh, but the development speed. I mean, that's something that I deal with. Yeah, it, it's like I can sell this. I I talked to two people, and we gave them a bulleted list, and told them the price, and they said, "That's right in our wheelhouse." When can you deliver it? <laughs> <laughs> let, me, let me get back. Let me that's get back. To a different you. color. Let me get back to you. And I'm thinking, like, sixty days, ninety days. Maybe this year. That was months ago. <laughs> That's not a good answer. It's not a good answer, but it's all you got, right? And I'm not. I, I can't get under the hood and say, let me let me ratchet this thing around and make it yeah. go faster. You know, you believe in your team. Yeah. Uh, they do a good job, and you move on. But it, that is a frustration. And it maybe is that's a frustration. and maybe that's good. 
be in that position as the founding, you know, founding entrepreneur. Um, it is, I mean, like I'm a more technical, more technical founder now. The second time around than I was the first time. The first time I was absolutely not a technical founder at all. Now I'm definitely a bit more of one, um, and that's for better or for worse. You do have to trust your team. Um, but I also believe in pushing them a little harder than they maybe think that they can go. Um, we've had success doing that so far, and, and I think... You know, how, do you, how do you do that? I mean, because it's a fine line, because you don't want to alienate people, be unreasonable, all that. No. What, what a lot of, I mean, I, and I don't know what you do. I try to bring it around, you know, we can get it launched by this date. I can get it to market and do this. I think we can realize this money. I don't know what you tell, well, so as my, you, what you work with your team like, on. I, I, I'm very transparent with... With our, with our roadmap and with our vision and where we want to be. And I think as long as you're transparent like that, then I can go to them and be like, hey guys, look, like this is really important, you can see. Let's try to do it. And what I do is I also show customer feedback. So if we get, you know, like developers really respond to customers probably a lot more than you actually think. That's true. And so if we show them, if I go to them and say, guys, this is really not that good, we need to fix this right now, I'm be like, oh, okay, Matt, sure, we'll get to it. But if I show them a customer that's complaining about something, they're like, drop everything. We need to we need to make that better and, that, and deliver it quickly. That's true. Last question I'll ask you. Um, there was a room full of uh, lawyers thinking about starting a company and legal tech thing. What, what's the one piece of advice you'd give them? Do it a hundred percent. What? Go for it. Go for it. 100%. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. And like, the thing is, is you don't have to. Um, there will be a point where you need to fully commit. But the beauty about being a lawyer, especially if you're a solo, if you're a solo, you know, firm owner or, or your partner or something, you do have the flexibility to to do some things with your time. Right? That's right. And, and this is what I did when I started my case. Like I was running my own law firm. I, I, you know, I, I don't if you remember this little tidbit. You and I have talked about it years ago. But I started my case about four weeks after I started my own firm. And I also had found out that my wife was pregnant with our first child. So there's a there's a lot going on. There's never a good time. To start to, to start one, so I spent the first year not only building my case but also building my law firm, and it worked. It worked. You know, you, you have more time than you think if you're your own if you're your own boss. Um, just do it. Don't worry about money. Don't go. Don't go being like, oh, I got this great idea. I'm going to quit my law firm and raise money. That's just <laughs> that's just dumb. It's, not, it's unnecessary. Yeah, it'll cost you your marriage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And maybe, and maybe a lot more. It's just unnecessary. So I would say go for it, a hundred percent in line with like your firm like yeah. don't don't quit your day job but absolutely do something on the side moonlight it get it going nights and weekends or during the day whenever you have time and then let it evolve let it let it grow organically let it see how it runs in conjunction with your firm and, and then go from there because also if you're starting something in the legal space your firm is a great cultivation pot for oh, absolutely that, right it's a, it's a great incubator for your own idea that's what we did at, at my case right it's like we we would do something test it in my firm see how it goes test it in your friends firms and then it's like oh wow now we've got something that other firms are going to want now you can go focus on that thanks matt always a pleasure always a pleasure